This episode contains adult language and topics that may be disturbing for some listeners. Such topics include suicide, drug use, physical or sexual abuse of a child. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Grant. And I'm Erica. And this is From From Crime Crime to to Crime. Crime. Welcome back to From Crime to Crime, and if you joined us last week when Erica had COVID and I made fun of her, COVID made its way <laughs> to my house. Yeah, it did. I told you I was going to send it to you. Yep, uh, via my 17-year-old sister. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, how's your COVID vacation been? Oh my God. It's been not fun at all. I've been isolated from everybody else. Um, but we're watching my friend's dog, and so which uh, they're also big fans of the podcast. So hi to Shannon and Josh. But yeah, we have their dog Freya here, and so it's making my COVID time exponentially much more better. So yeah, since your wife banished you to the back, house. dude, I know, <laughs> I know. And we even talked about it, and I was like, Christine, you know that like if the roles were reversed, I wouldn't make you do this. And she's like, I know you wouldn't follow the rules. I'm like, oh my god. Okay, <laughs> so here I am, lonely and outside in the guest house, but, you know. Well, you yeah. can come to my house. We're just COVID everywhere. Well, I know. You guys got it, so now you're immune to it for the next three months, and I am excited about that. I'm excited to, you know, be basically, like, impenetrable for for the next several months with antibodies. Bulletproof. Yeah, exactly. I can go anywhere. Yeah. Anyway, we should get into this case, because it could end up being really long and Nobody cares that we're sick. No. Obviously. We barely care that we're sick. Yeah. So this week we are headed to Oklahoma for this episode, and I'm pretty sure this is our first Oklahoma case. We're like hitting all the new states. All right. Checking them off. Yeah. So this case takes place in July of 2013, and I didn't even bother looking up the number one song (laughs) because I'm sure it's something real dumb. I'm positive it's something stupid. Oh, it's got to be like so. Luke Bryan or or Florida Georgia Line or just something. Taylor Swift. Yeah, I bet. Well, Taylor Swift's not dumb. Well, she's also not country either, so. Yeah, but she's certainly not dumb. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to get on that. I had no idea you were a big Swifty. Yeah, I love Taylor Swift. Really? I See, I had no idea. Yeah. Yes, you did. I, I didn't. I didn't know that. Many people were, but I am learning more and more that, dude, people love Taylor Swift. She's huge. Oh, yeah. So we are going to be talking about Molly Miller and Colt Haynes tonight. Molly was 17, and she's been described as like a good kid. She was an athlete. She was close with her family. She was living with her grandparents at the time, and she hit a little bit of a rebellious streak right around the time that this story that we're going to talk about takes place. And she started hanging out with the wrong people. Yeah, you know, and like it was probably around 17 or so when I started hanging out with the wrong people too, but... I've held on to you for, you know, ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we got into some trouble, but you always made sure we didn't get into the bad, worst kind of trouble, just that we got yeah. into a little bit of trouble. And usually we got away with it. Yeah. Well, obviously. Well, I think that's the big takeaway here is it's okay to get in a little trouble when you're 17. You just can't get into too much trouble or the wrong trouble. Right. So about a week before the night that we're going to be talking about, Molly started hanging out with a 21-year-old named Colt Haynes. And we don't know a lot about their relationship or about Colt really in general. And we're also not sure if this was a romantic relationship or just friends. We're not quite sure. But Colt was a little bit older and he had a a history with drugs and the law. And he's been described as generally a good guy besides his drug problem. It sounds a lot like a young girl who was hanging around with the wrong people and stuff, and she's probably just got really infatuated with this guy, you know, like just yeah wanted to spend time with him. And he was probably, you know, in her eyes, pretty cool. Right. You know, he probably shouldn't have been hanging around with her at 21, but... No, but small towns, you know, that's kind of, I don't know what your options are, you know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That sounds bad, but when you only have 2000 people in the whole town, it's like, (laughs) you know, so Uh, on the night of July, we're going to get shit for this. (laughs) We're going to get shit for bashing on small towns in Oklahoma, but 
whatever. Everyone right. gets it on From Crime to Crime. It's just their turn. Yep. So on the night of July 7th, 2013, Molly and Colt were in a car with a man named James Con Nip. <laughs> Who goes by Khan. Of course he does. Is, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, of course he does. Fucking ridiculous. And for the record, don't hang out with anybody who goes by Khan. Just, it it just yeah. doesn't work. It can't work out. Yeah. So this was already a little bit unusual because Colt and Khan were not friends. Colt had a baby with a woman that Khan had dated. And so there was some bad history there. And for whatever reason, though, they were all in Khan's 2012 Honda Accord. Yeah, new car. Yeah, and Khan did a burnout in front of a Wilson, Oklahoma police officer, and he slung gravel and rocks at him and then took off, which is a bold move. (laughs) Yeah, it is a bold move, and it's a really stupid thing, but this guy's kind of stupid. Like, he's done this before. It's kind of his thing, and people know him for it. And it's like, again, guys, this is what he's known for, and he goes by Khan. Probably not not the crowd to be hanging out with. Right. So, obviously, a pursuit followed because the cop was like, you can't do that in front of me. And it's been said that Khan was going 120 down a country road called Pike Road, headed out of town. Like, he crossed over from Carter County and Wilson, where he was, over into Love County. And the police radioed ahead to Love County sheriffs to take over the pursuit, and they did at first— But then Khan was heading down Long Hollow Road towards his family's property. And shortly after the Love County Sheriff took over, Sheriff Joe Russell called off the chase. And he said he didn't want another one of his cars torn up. Okay. I mean, I guess that makes kind of sense. Like, Yeah, they can't afford to just buy new cars every week. Right. And we're from California. Car chases happen here all the time. And they're televised and they're a big deal. And we know quite a bit about them. Um, I mean, people stop what they're doing to watch. Them and things like that. It's funny because I always think when whenever there's a car chase, I'm always like, these people never get away. Why do they think they're <laughs> going to get away? Like, but then after Life PD was a show and doing all the research on the podcast and everything, they call off chases all the time, just not where we're from. Right. So is it and is it like California as a whole? Or is it just like the bigger cities? Because we've obviously grown up in, in bigger areas. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either, but I don't know. But on Live PD, like every episode, there was a high speed chase and it would get called off because it was unsafe to the other drivers. It's like, yeah, that's the exciting part. Yeah. That's why we watch it. <laughs> so we want to see who they're going to T-bone. That's like it is crazy. And like, I, I don't think people understand. Like, that's just that's kind of a source of entertainment out here. Like, oh, there's a high speed yeah. chase. Get to the TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had a TV in the hair salon just to turn on chases. Oh, I have no doubt about it. You know, because they happen yeah, all the time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Turn on KCAL 9 News and see what's going on. Yeah, so I guess calling off this chase was common enough. You know, they didn't want to mess up their cars on a country road going 120 miles an hour. But what wasn't common was that there was no write-up about the incident. Like, they didn't, oh, record all the stuff and what happened and write a report and the whole thing. Like, it just kind of just... Was done. Yeah. And for the most small town country feel, you know, reason there could be. Yeah. Con Nip, the driver, was Sheriff Joe Russell's nephew or cousin or some fucking hillbilly shit. <laughs> Maybe both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the sheriff is his, is related to him. Right. So the sheriff, the one that called it off, is related to Con Nip. So now we're starting to see, like, why this kid gets away with what he gets away with and why he's kind of a jerk and why he just runs the town, apparently, and just throws gravel at cops and takes them on high-speed chases because he gets away with it. Have we had any explanation into why Khan is his middle name? No. Okay. I don't know. I mean, it, the, the, the uncle or cousin or something. Predicting the future. Well, no. <laughs> the uncle or cousin, like, he's in <laughs> and predicting the future. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. It <laughs> took me a minute, yeah. but I got it. <laughs> it came around. The COVID. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, like, obviously, he's probably already in law enforcement, and they're like, oh, we're going to name this kid Con. And, like, what? Yeah, I don't know. Where are you going with that? <laughs> you know? I don't know. So this is sometime around 10.30 p.m., And no one hears from Con, Molly, or Colt for a few hours until after midnight. And that's when Molly's phone makes numerous 911 calls. And they come into Love County 911, but none of the calls connect. Like, she's not on the other end. They can't hear her. Hmm. But her 
phone keeps calling 911, but nothing connects. Now, Colt's phone also makes a bunch of 911 calls around this time. And when none of the 911 calls connect, they start calling friends and family. And the gist of what they tell the very few people that they get a hold of is that they're lost in the woods and they need a ride and they need water. One friend also said that Colt told him that he climbed a tree to either see where they were or get better cell phone reception. And he fell out of the tree and broke his ankle. And he said that his ankle was broken so bad the bone was sticking out. Oh, man. That's that's pretty bad. Yeah. That, yeah. You can't really walk on that. Yeah. So by the next morning, some of Colt's friends drove out to try to find them and pick them up. And they were on the phone with Colt and Molly. And a property owner came out and was like, hey, what, the, what are you doing on my property? And they were like, dude, our friend's lost in the woods somewhere around here. And the property owner was like, well, let me help. <laughs> And he went inside and he got his gun and he fired his gun in the air and was like, ask him if he can hear my gun. I mean, that's kind of genius, I guess. I, I mean, it does make sense. It's just so redneck to me. Like, well, I know. let's just hear it. And I'm sure it, it worked. I Well, I mean, it worked in the sense that they couldn't hear it. So they knew that they weren't anywhere close. But right. I just I mean, I do kind of have a funny time fathoming like these people walking out and this guy's like, I got the solution. Let's hear Let's see if they can hear my gun. Yeah. Like, yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, I get it. So but. like you said, Colt couldn't hear his gun, though. So they were obviously not anywhere close. And by 10 a.m., Colt and Molly's cell phones were either dead or turned off. And his friends hadn't found them by that point. So they went back to town and they did find Con who said he had no idea where they were or where his car was. Like, he denied everything. And they were like, what are you talking about? You were with them last night. Where did you, where'd they go? Where did you go? Where's your car? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing. Like, I'm like, uh, this okay. Is clearly not a person anyone should be hanging out with. No. So the family of Colt and Molly decided to call the sheriff and make a missing persons report so that the sheriff's office would help them search the woods. But they were shocked when Sheriff Joe Russell refused to take the report. He literally said, this is not my problem. Molly's a runaway. It's not my problem. Yeah. Did they, at this um, point, did you're they... the sheriff. This is certainly your problem. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And do they know at this point that Khan is his is his relative or like it's probably really well known right yeah of course yeah the whole town knows that yeah and they all know that there's corruption and it's not a secret oh i see oh okay so they know from the get-go yeah this guy's into he's no good no good baby you're no good yeah (laughs) yeah to the point where his dispatcher that took the call and told him like hey molly miller's family's on the phone they want to make a missing persons and he's like not my problem that lady actually took down all the information and she made a bunch of flyers and hung them up like in the sheriff's office and around town and she ended up getting fired a couple of weeks later whoa yeah really yeah and i i've never heard what the like on record reason for her being fired but it's implied that this is why she was fired yeah i can tell you the the reason why she was fired yeah maybe not the exact yeah re- record reason exactly. but wow right. i hadn't read that that yeah that is uh that is something yeah so the sheriff had no intention of helping and he also had every intention of messing with anybody who tried to help apparently like when the family tried to go to the media and have like a news report about them being missing and get the word out Mm -hmm. he literally told the reporters like oh she's just a runaway don't worry about this don't run this she's just a runaway like that's so wrong for so many reasons to say i know like i hate that yeah my whole thing it's like even if she was a runaway she is a child You still have to find her. It's still your job. Oh, absolutely. Like, I don't get that mindset. So anyway, the family couldn't get any help, obviously, from the Love County Sheriff. So they turned to the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, who actually did look into the the case as much as they could. And they looked into this chase. And the little bit that they did find was a busted up fence near where the chase had been abandoned. Uh And a couple of weeks later, they found Khan's wrecked car in the woods not too far from this fence. So they were able to open up like a hit and run case because he ran through a bunch of people's fences. And what's good about that is this was this was what allowed them to be able to get search warrants, mostly for the cell records, which is how we know 
that they called 911 a bunch of times and all the calls to the friends. We know where the calls came from, like where they pinged generally. Right. You know, so that's good. But what is weird, too, about the 911 calls is Oklahoma has a domestic violence law where if somebody calls 911 and hangs up, and 911 calls back and they don't get a response, they're supposed to send somebody to check it out. A lot of places have those kind of laws now. Yeah. Thankfully. And they never sent anybody. Oh. Molly and Colt, between the two of them, called 911 a couple dozen times and they never sent anybody to check it out. Oh, man. So this led almost nowhere, though. Like I said, besides knowing that they called 911 and that they called friends, it didn't lead them to Molly or Colt. So the family spent the next several months trying to make progress in the search and get the sheriff to do his job, but that was obviously not going to happen. And the even the searching was hard because it's not just dense woods. It's private property. A lot of it is owned by different people. Oh, that's and hard. this is the type of area where you don't just go on somebody's property. Because <laughs> they'll go inside. Like, they the... might come out with a gun and help you, <laughs> or they might come out with a gun and shoot you. So, <laughs> yeah. Part of the problem is the Nip family owns a lot of the property out oh, here. Oh, jeez. Because no... this is where Khan was running to. Right, of course. No wonder this kid, like, just does whatever he wants. Right. So... They've never been able to search any of the NIP property ever. So they've been, like I said, for months and months and months, they're trying to to search and do all this stuff on their own. They're getting zero help from the sheriff. Yeah. So about a year after the disappearance, with still no word from Colt and Molly, the family decided to hire a private investigator. And the investigator did a lot of digging and came up with his own timeline. And he pretty much thinks that the three of them were in the car together because of drugs, which is pretty much the only thing that makes sense because Con so and Colt didn't like each other. Molly and Con knew each other and Molly and Colt just met a week ago. Right. But the boys didn't like each other. But Con being the meth connection in town. <laughs> Yeah. Like, if you have a meth problem, you got to deal with him, you know, so. And, like, what makes Molly and Colt's relationship, whatever it is, that much more interesting is her best friend says that she knew nothing about Colt. So it's not like, right. you know, she was running to her and like, oh, my gosh, I love this guy or, you know, I met him. He's so great. Right. It was all kind of brand new. But also she's kind of veering off on her own path. So it's possible that right. she's not telling her friend kind of about the bad choices she's making. If that's what yeah, she's doing. I was going to say, especially if her friend wasn't involved in right. this scene with these people. Exactly. But that is a reason that would make sense for all of them to be in the car together. I mean, at this point, it's the only one that makes the makes logical sense. Yeah. Yeah. So his kind of conclusion that he came to or like his timeline was that they were in the car together. This high speed chase situation happens because Khan is obnoxious and I don't think that was a plan. I don't think they were like, yeah, let's do that. I think it was something that they got roped into because they were in the car with him. It was probably something like, hey, you guys want to see something cool? Like, watch this. And yeah. they were like, oh, why are you doing that? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You know, that's kind of how yeah. I see that going down. Like, you're doing drugs, allegedly. Yeah. You're not trying to <laughs> get the police's attention. Yeah. So his timeline pretty much goes that Molly and Colt ran from the car at some point, whether it was when Con crashed or it could have even been before, you know, he slowed down and they hopped out and ran and then he crashed farther up the road or when he crashed the car, they all three took off. Molly and Colt were lost all night and calling friends and 911 and but Con made it home. So it's possible when the car crashed, they all three took off different directions, or Molly and Colt went one way and Con went another way. Especially if if this is the area Con knows very well. Exactly. It's his neck of the woods. He knew exactly where he was. Yeah. So the investigator has kind of like come to the conclusion, not conclusion, he doesn't know, but his thought process is the next morning after their phones had died and everybody couldn't find them, Khan knew where they were because he mm. knew where the car had crashed. He knew which direction they ran. So the thought process is, is that he probably went back and got them. Oh, and finished the job. And something happened. Yeah. Either they got in a fight or there was some kind of, we can get into that in the theories, but something happened after he found them. So, because the only other option is that they got lost in the woods and died of exposure. 
Yeah, which, and that doesn't... In the nine years since they went missing, their bodies would have been found. Right, and that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. Like, it's not like this is a... It doesn't. You know, desolate, thick wooded area, like in the middle of nowhere. Like, no, there's, I mean, there's, high, it is high... like there's woods, but there's also homes and roads and, right, you know, there's, there's things like no matter which way they would have picked to walk, they would have either hit a house, a road, a farm, you know, like something. They would have hit something within like a mile. Yeah, absolutely. Like this should have been something. If if this is if that is what happened, it would have been most likely really relatively easy to you know to find. Right. There's a few reasons though that people suspect that Khan did something to them besides the private investigator thinking so. He's known to be a local drug dealer, pretty much, and thug. Yeah. He wasn't helpful at all during the searches and the aftermath of them going missing. Which, if you were the last person to be with your two best friends. And you didn't do anything with to them, you would want to help, I would imagine. Well, also, we can't call them two best friends. Like they don't like well, each other. You're two friends. You're right. You're two friends. Uh, I don't. Friends. I don't. I don't even say that. Like they know each other. I think that's it. I. I don't. Well, him and Molly were friends. Him and Colt didn't like each other. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like. Uh... I get where you're going with it, but I feel like if Khan did have something to do with it, like he's, I can see him being the type to stay as far away from it as possible. Yeah. Probably by the direction of his uncle. Yeah. So another reason is all the rumors in the small town, obviously, they just fly like you wouldn't believe. Ex-girlfriends have come forward saying he was abusive. The corruption with his uncle, like, or cousin, I don't know how they're actually related. Everybody seems to be a cousin. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. Then there was a gun and a machete that an anonymous witness gave to the OSBI, which is the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, who has the case now because nobody trusts the Love County Sheriff's <laughs> Department. Fair. Very fair. Yeah, and this witness says that they got this machete and this gun from Khan's mom, who got it from Khan the day after Molly and Cole went missing, which is like, okay, that seems yeah. convenient. Yeah, really. Then Cadaver Dogs Oh, that's hit. a really cool uh, name for a true crime fan base if anyone's thinking about it. Is it? Yep. Is it, though? It yeah. so is. So Cadaver Dogs hit on different spots of the property owned by the Nips that mysteriously caught on fire, like, the next day. Then Khan's sister came forward saying that she heard him tell people he was going to jail for murder. Like, the rumors don't end. They just, it's just... Yeah, it just goes on and on and on. Then there was this 911 call made by Khan's cousin, uncle, I don't know, yeah. Colby Barrett, and he literally pocket dialed 911. And you can hear him talking to somebody, and it sounds like he says things like Molly, murdered, shot, Moxley Pond. Like, there's certain words it sounds like he says. Oh, that's a... <laughs> what are the odds, you know? Like, whoop. Talk, <laughs> yeah, talking exactly. about the crime, accidentally to pocket dial 911. Yeah, so some people argue that they could have literally just gotten lost and died, but like we talked about, it's not that dense. If that was the case, they literally would have been found, like, pretty immediately. Yeah, yeah, I, I certainly think so, too. So it does seem like something foul play-ish went on here. Well, and especially when you take it into account that Khan was also arrested for that police chase in January of 2014. So, yep. and he was sentenced to 10 years, but he only did four and was released in 2018. So, you know, really just kind of a slap yep. of the wrist for something like that. Yeah. One good thing, though, that came out of this case so far is that in 2017, Sheriff Joe Russell was arrested on charges of corruption. There we go. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. So it turns out that the OSBI had to take over the case because they weren't getting anywhere with the sheriff. And once the OSBI and the FBI got involved, then other things started coming to light. And it turns out that Sheriff Joe's son, Willie, was like a big time meth dealer oh. in town. <laughs> and he was dealing meth out of his dad's house and using the sheriff's office vehicles to do it. This this right here, this stuff is exactly why small town Oklahoma has the reputation that it does and yeah. why we point it out and make fun of it. And I'm sure someone's going to have something to say about it and tell us that we're, you know, uh, what was the word that they called us? Um Judgmental. Judgmental. But, you know, like, I would say more... The shoe fits Oklahoma. Yeah, I mean, like, maybe a little more stereotypical 
uh, yeah. pointing out is what, what we're doing here. So anyway. Yeah. This guy, seriously, though, was horrible. Like, there's a rumor that there was a girl that was living with them who had a felony warrant. And he pretty much said, as long as you keep sleeping with my son, oh. you could stay here. But then as soon as that girl tried to leave his son, and she literally escaped and went and stayed with some other guy, he went out and arrested her and the guy oh. for harboring a fugitive. Oh, Like, my that was God. the kind of shit, like, aside from the drug dealing and all that kind of stuff, like, they literally used the sheriff's office for this family to just run this town. Or county, I guess. You really don't think about that kind of stuff actually happening until you hear about it actually happening and you just think, like, <laughs> what is going on? Like, you know, people just get power and they just they, they lose their minds. They just go absolutely nuts. Yeah. So the sad part is that he he ended up pleading guilty to misdemeanors and never served any jail time. But he cannot be sheriff anymore, so that's good. <laughs> and he's applied a couple of times in different counties in Oklahoma to be a process server. Yeah, I saw that. I don't know what that is. Do you? Yeah, it's where you can serve people civil papers, like when they get sued. Oh, okay. So that's kind of what I actually thought that it was. Yeah, but the judges, the judges, <laughs> every time he's tried, both judges are like, no, <laughs> well, no, no. At least they got. You're that. not doing anything that has to do with this county ever again, <laughs> <laughs> or this state. Yeah. What a weird thing, too, for him to be, like, continually to try and do, like, this is the job that I want. I've turned my life yeah. around. I want to be a process server and dress up like a Domino's man. Yep. So we're coming up on nine years and still no sign of Molly or Colt. No one's given up, though, and Up and Vanished did a documentary on this case, and the private investigator, his name is Klein, he's still applying for search warrants. Oh, wow. Like, to try to search the NIP property. So hopefully someday we'll find out what happened to Colt and Molly. I mean, I think the pressure needs to get put on uh, old Khan, and I think yeah. he holds some answers there one way or the other. I don't know exactly, but I think he, he knows some things, I think. Yeah, it does seem that way. So, like I said, there's not too many theories of this, just they got lost in the woods and died of exposure, or Khan did something to them. Yeah. Like, those are pretty much the two theories, so. I mean, there's obviously a million things that could have happened, like they could have gotten in a fight over drugs and it went poorly and Molly witnessed something she shouldn't have between the boys. So then they got rid of her or could have been anything that caused whatever happened. Yeah. You know, when people are doing drugs, they don't always make sense. Right. Exactly. Like the reason may not even make that much sense. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it started with, hey, watch this and let me, you know, burn out in front of these cops. And I think it was just a, honestly just a fatal, you know, downgrade from yeah. there for Colt probably said something, you know, I mean, they already don't like each other. Let's be real. Khan's acting like yeah. an asshole. Colt probably says something. There is probably some kind of, you know, issue one way or the other. So I think all signs yeah. point to Khan. Yeah, I think so, too. Convict. Plus his. Yeah, I was like, plus his name. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> The other thing that it could have been was some weird love triangle thing, you know, if Khan had a thing for Molly and then he found out that Molly had a thing for Colt and... Colt had a thing for Khan, yeah. <laughs> no? Uh -huh. But his ex-girlfriend already left him for Colt and then had a baby with Colt. Oh, yeah. So if, oh, if he had, like, some advance towards Molly and then Molly was like, oh, sorry, I'm dating Colt, like, that could have been a problem, too. Yeah. No, absolutely. But the good, like I said, the good news is that this... Family is not running this town anymore, so... Yeah, no, that's a huge plus. Yeah, so and that's kind of recent, like, in the last couple of years, yeah, so... Yeah, seriously. Maybe, maybe now that that's not a thing anymore and people aren't afraid of them, maybe people will start coming forward if they know something. We have quite a few listeners in Oklahoma. If any of you are listening, go to our Instagram, at From Crime to Crime. Let us know. Do you guys know anything more about this? Is there something that isn't on the internet? I'd love to find out, and I'm sure... I'm sure we can get some, some dirt on some of this stuff, so let us know. Oh, there's tons of rumors. I listened to a podcast that has nine episodes, and each episode is about a different rumor of what happened to these kids. Man. Yeah. All right, guys, so ch don't forget to change your Amazon smile to DNA Dough Project. And one day I will. All right, buddy. <laughs> All right, I love you. I love you, too. Bye. I hope you feel better. Thanks, I hope you feel better. I'll call you and check on you later. Okay. All right.